Adding the subtle shadow to text can help it pop slightly to make it stand out better. All you need to do is to add the text shadow property. I'd like to add a text shadow to the main heading in my California site. And to see the effect as it's applied, I'm going to turn on Live View. Then I'll select the H1 selector in the CSS Styles panel, and I need to add the property Text Shadow. So it's text hyphen shadow. There it is. And this brings up a little icon in the value field. Click that, and you've got the options for the X offset, the horizontal offset, the vertical offset, blur radius, and color. When adding a text shadow, I think it's much better if you use a color with alpha transparency. So use the RGBA or HSLA color formats. So I'm going to click the color picker. I can see from the top there that I'm already using RGBA. But if you're not using RGBA, then click this arrow here, go to color format, and select either RGBA or HSLA. I'm going to click RGBA and then use the second one down from the black, which is 51, 51, 51, and 1. That 1 at the end is complete opacity. Unfortunately, there isn't an opacity slider in the color picker, so I'll have to fix that later. So we just select that, and then I'm going to set the horizontal offset to 3 pixels. You can just see that black border coming out from the edge of the text. The vertical offset, I'll have the same value, and it's now coming down, and we'll have a blur radius also of 3 pixels. It looks pretty horrendous at the moment, but I think that once I fix the alpha transparency, it should look pretty okay. So I'm just going to click away from there, and then to fix the opacity, right-click on Text Shadow, and select Go to Code. And here's the Text Shadow property definition. 3 pixels horizontal offset, 3 pixels vertical offset, 3 pixels of blur, and then the color. And I need to change that 1, which is complete opacity, to 0 0.5, which will be 50% alpha transparency. And if I switch back to design view, and you can now see it's a fairly subtle effect which we've got with that text shadow. Although Text Shadow is a CSS3 property, you don't need to use any vendor-specific prefixes. Originally, Text Shadow was part of the CSS2 specification, but it was removed because browsers didn't support it. Ironically, almost as soon as it was removed, browsers started supporting. So it became one of the first CSS3 properties to be widely supported, with the exception of Internet Explorer. And it's planned that it will be in Internet Explorer 10. So to add a text shadow in Dreamweaver, use the text shadow property, and then open this little panel to set the horizontal vertical offsets and the blur radius, as well as the color. Now this panel supports only one text shadow, but the specification allows you to apply multiple shadows to the same element. And as a bonus, you can find this file in the course assets. It's multiple shadows HTML, and it's in the Special Effects with CSS3 Text Shadow folder. And these elements have got multiple shadows applied to them. If you right-click and select View Page Source, I've put all the style rules in the head of the document, and they're commented to help you understand how the effects work. Basically, with the letterpress effect here, the first shadow on the raised version is with negative values, so it's moved to the left and upwards. And the other one is with positive value, so it's moved to the right and down. And the inset one is the same, except the colors are the other way round. For the glow effect, I set both offsets to zero and used a large blur. And this intense glow here, that was created by repeating the same definition for the shadow multiple times. And when you add multiple shadows, it's a comma-separated list of the same values as before. So I hope that you'll experiment with Tech Shadow and come up with some really interesting effects.